Let's talk now to international affairs analyst Dana Lewis, who joins me live from London. Great to have you with us on the programme today, Good. Dana. So, retaliation against the US measures from Russia. Can this kind of tit-for-tat battle ever end well? Well, I mean, it's pretty standard spy fare reciprocity where the U.S. kicks out 10 diplomats and Russia turns around and announces the, the same thing and uh, says there's going to be sanctions on eight other people that, you know, essentially they're travel bans. I think one of them is the FBI director, Ray. So, you know, it, it wasn't unexpected. Uh, I think probably what's more important is that Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, uh, said that there were currently 450 diplomatic staff in Russia um, and 350 Russian uh, diplomats in the U.S. And he said maybe if this continues, the Americans will be asked to bring the number of employees in Russia in line with the number of Russians in the United States. That's an implied threat that he would kick out another 100 diplomats uh, if this escalates. And there is more likely to come, Robin, over Ukraine, uh, over, over the use of a uh, chemical nerve agent uh, against Alexei Navalny. So I, I think, you know, we're, we're not at the end of this. Well, I wanted to ask you about Ukraine, actually, Dana, because how much of this do you think is about uh, the U.S. election and how much of it is about what is happening now in Ukraine? Well, I mean, I think that the Biden administration's initial salvo here is to deal with the computer hacking uh, in the United States of government computers. It's a massive hacking, Robin. I mean, that, according to computer experts that I've talked to who were former NSA officials, they say that the Russians are still in their systems. I mean, they cannot get them out because of the embedded software. That is a massive, significant, threatening, uh, you know, electrical company, government electrical grids, for example, uh, problem that the Americans are still uh, coming to terms with. And in addition to the uh, to that, then you have the election hacking uh, in 2020 and then some of the incidents in 2018. So Biden is making good on promises to be tough with the Russians. But at the same time, I mean, he could have gone a lot further. So, you know, restricting American companies from uh, buying Russian issued new government bond uh, uh, debt uh, is is not overly significant. But it's it's a a salvo that says, if you go any further, if you don't stop, we can do more. And they are still having to consider the Novichok uh, sanctions. That's a nerve agent. Russia is a, a signator to the chemical weapons biological treaties. Uh, and they are not supposed to be manufacturing, storing, deploying Novichok. And there is likely going to be a sanction, a sanction uh, in that case. And then, as you mentioned, Ukraine, um, you know, how tough do they get with Russia now as Russia is sitting 40,000 troops on Ukraine's border and America, along with the EU, is trying to get Russia to de-escalate. So I think Biden went as far as he thought he should, uh, but is prepared to go further if things escalate in, in all these different chess pieces that are still in play. So uh, it sounds like you think there's possibly more brinkmanship to come here. How do you think this will be resolved? Well, it's it's an ongoing, never resolved conflict between America and and Russia. And so I don't think that there is a resolution. I think President Biden, as, as he said in his news conference, has said, you know, we want to work with the Russians where we can on things like the start uh, a limiting treaty on nuclear warheads and, and renewing things like that, that, that benefit American security as well as Russian security. But I think unless they see a change in President Putin, which you know, after you know, 21 years, we're not about to see that, uh, we will continue to, to see the two countries rubbing up against one another and, and room for a lot more friction to come. Okay, Dana Lewis, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today on the programme.